This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey everyone, welcome back. Now in this video, let's try to solve one more real SQL interview problem. Now this time the problem was asked by Google. It was shared to me by Abdul in my email and he faced this problem I think when he gave an interview for Google. So this problem itself is actually pretty simple and the solution is also pretty simple. But of course there is a slight amount of trickiness that you might need to consider when solving this kind of a problem. So straight away, let's look at this problem statement and try to solve it. Okay, so let's look at the problem statement as given by Abdul in his email. We'll try to understand this and then try to solve it. Okay, so he says that there is a given table that is user activity. This is a structure of the table and they say that this table does not contain any primary key. This table contains information about activity performed by each user in a period of time. Okay, a person with a username performed an activity from start date to end date. Okay, and they are asking us to write the SQL query to show the second most recent activity of each user. Okay, so if a user only has one activity, then return that record itself. A user can't perform more than one activity at the same time. Return the result table in any order. Okay, so they are telling that we have been given an input table user activity. The data looks something like this. So we have three records for Amy and there is one record for Joe and Amy has done the activity travel uh, between the date 12th February 2020 and 20th February and then from 21st February to 23rd February uh, Amy did uh, dancing and then from 24th February to 28th February Amy did travel okay and what we need to do is we need to find the second most recent activity the second most recent so if I had to see the most recent activity then it would be this one right the last activity that she did that is the recent activity but we need to find the second most recent that second most would be this one right the second record here dancing right though this is for Amy but when it comes to Joe since he has only one record it is mentioned that if the user only has one activity then return that so Joe has done only one activity so there is no second most recent activity so we need to return the record that is the only record that is present okay so and here they are mentioning the required output that is Amy dancing and Joe travel I hope this is clear now the given uh, input data is only for four records but I have created four additional records just so that uh, we can write a solution which would work for all different scenarios so as you can see I have created the table in my database so this is the four record that was present in the problem statement I created these four records with a new user Adam okay and I have some four different activities that he has performed uh, during some days now let's try to write a query which is going to transform this input into something like this so that we can fetch the second most recent activity for each user. Now let's think of a possible approach that we can use to solve this problem. So what I need to do is from this table data I need to fetch this record that is okay yeah this is the second most recent record and then I need to fetch this record. So this record this record and then from Adam the second most recent is this one right. So you can see that all the uh, records are sorted in the form of start date. Okay, so the second most recent activity for Adam is this one, right? Now, how do we find these records and fetch only these records? So what I can do is, so first of all, I can do one thing. I can try to partition the data or group the data based on each username. Okay, so for one partition for Amy, one for Joe and one for Adam. And within that partition, first of all, I can count how many records are present. Okay, so I can say that in for Amy, there are three records. For, for Joe, there is one record. For Adam, there are four records. So I can use the count function to count the number of records. And then what I can do is I can... I can use the row number to give a unique row number for each of this record and then what I can do finally is using this row number and using the count I can only fetch the second most recent record. So for example for these four records from Adam what I can say is if I count the number of records for Adam I would get the count as four and if I give a unique row number for each of this record I would have one two three and four. I know that count is going to return me the total number of records, right? So if I want the second most recent activity, if I do count minus one, that will be three. And if I fetch the record with the row number three, then hopefully I will get this record. And the same thing will apply for all the other uh, records, right? But for the person Joe, since he has only one record, I can put some case statement to handle that. I hope you kind of get an idea how we can solve it using the row number and the count functions. So let's straight away try to write the solution for this. 
Now, before I can continue, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community where you can find thousands of online classes related to almost any skill that you can think of. Now, one of my favorite classes that I have taken on Skillshare is the YouTube success class conducted by MKBHD. Now, MKBHD or Marcus Brownlee is one of the most reputed creators on YouTube and his class on Skillshare can help anyone who is interested in making good YouTube videos. Now, in his class, he starts by talking about how to come up with YouTube video ideas. He then talks about how to script YouTube videos. He then shares his knowledge on how to shoot videos and some really interesting tips on lighting setup for YouTube videos. At the end, he also shared some very useful tips and tricks about video editing. Now, similar to this particular class, there are thousands of other classes on Skillshare that can help anyone learn any skill. So if you are someone who wants to gain some new skills, then Skillshare is a platform that you should definitely check out. Now, the best part about Skillshare is that you can access all the online classes that they already have for free for up to one month by using my link, which I will be sharing in the description below. Now, remember, only the first 1000 people who will be clicking on my link will get one month of free access to Skillshare. So definitely check out Skillshare and try to gain some new skills. So first of all, I am going to create a row number for each of these records. So I'm just going to use the window function row number. So I'm just going to say row number over and I will partition the data based on each user. So partition by user name and I want to sort the data in proper order that is using the start date, right? So that we can fetch the second most recent activity properly, right? So order by start date, okay? And let it be in ascending order. And I think I'm going to name it like row number. So if I run this, now you can see that I'm getting the row number. So for Adam, I have one, two, three, four. For Amy, I have one, two, three. And for Joe, there is only one. Okay, this is fine. What's the next step? The next step is I want to find how many records are present for each of these users. Okay, so let's first try to create this count function. So I'm just going to say count of, let's say star, okay, over. And I'll use the same thing that is this one. So partition by this, partition by username and order by start date. And I'm going to call it like, let's say count. Okay, if I run this, now you can see that I'm getting some values for count, but this count is not actually correct. Okay, because you see here, the first four records are of Adam, right? And the count should have been four because when I do count and when I do partition by username, that means these four records will be formed within that partition or within that window. And within that window, when I run count, I should be able to see that there are four records. So SQL should return me four, but SQL is returning some other value. Now, the reason why SQL is not able to fetch the correct count value is because of something called as default frame clause. Okay. Now, whenever you use a window function, there is a default frame clause that SQL uses. Now, the thing is, uh, this entire thing is my result set. Now, within that result set, I can create partitions or I can create windows uh, using the window function as I have done here. And within that window, again, SQL considered something called as a frame. Okay. And by default, there is a frame that SQL uses and whatever SQL is able to fetch within that frame, SQL is going to return that value. Okay. Now, if you're not sure about frame clause and everything, I have created a tutorial video on window functions where I have explained this frame clause in detail. I'm going to leave that uh, video link somewhere here or in the video description. So try to check that out to understand frame clause. Okay. Here, I'll try to give you a brief uh, explanation about that. Okay. Now, what I mean to say is, so for example, uh, I'm just going to do one thing. Okay. I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here and here I'm going to add a frame clause. Okay. So the frame clause can be added like this range between unbounded preceding and current row. Now what you see here is called as a frame clause. This basically tells SQL that within the window only get access to whatever records will fall in this range. Okay. And by default, the records that fall in the range is this one from unbounded preceding until current row. Now unbounded preceding basically means the very first record from in your window that is this particular record, the first record and current row basically is generally SQL will process one record at a time, right? So when SQL is processing the first record, the frame clause will only return first record. Why? Because it starts from unbounded proceeding that is very first record of your window till the current row. The current row is the first record itself. When SQL goes to process the second record, in this case, unbounded proceeding will be row uh, from the first record in that window and current row will be the second record. So it will have access to two records and that is why count of two records will return to. When it goes to processing the third record, unbounded proceeding will again return from the very first record of that window that is from the first line here and then current row will be the third record. So there is totally three records. So the count will return three 
and the same thing will happen for the fourth record here. So this is what a frame clause or the default frame clause does. But we can change the default functionality of a frame clause and let's see how to do that. So I'm going to add another count statement here by changing the frame clause. So here I will tell. Now one more thing is this line here and this line here is exactly the same. Okay, because whether I mention this range between this thing or I don't mention it, SQL internally will always consider the frame clause to be like this. Okay, so whether I mention it here or I uh, don't mention it here, it's basically the same thing. Okay, so these two things are exactly the same. Okay, now here in the third count that I've added, I'm going to change the frame clause. So unbounded preceding and here I'm going to say unbounded following. Okay. Now what unbounded following will do is it is going to fetch the records or the last record from that window. So this will mean that SQL will tell that the frame that you have currently access to is from the very first record of your window till the very last record of your window. Okay. And now if I run this, so let's say I'm going to name it like count new. Okay. And if I run this, now you can see here, these two counts are exactly the same here. The values are exactly the same. But if you see in this last column, you can see this is the correct count that I'm getting. Why? Now, when SQL is pursuing the very first record, it has access from unbounded preceding, very first record of the window, and until the unbounded following, that is the last record of the window. So all these four records. So in these four records, when it does the count function, it will return four. Okay. So I hope this frame clause concept is clear. And why I'm using this is because if I don't use this, the default frame clause, I'm not going to get the correct count. I want the count to return the total number of records for each user. And that is why I'm changing this default frame clause. Okay. Now I'm going to remove this uh, unwanted count and I'll only keep this correct count that I want. Okay. If I run this, now you can see that I'm getting the correct row number and I'm getting the correct count. Now let's try to use these two to return our final output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use put this into a with clause. I'm going to say with CT as, and I'll just move this to the right and I'll just put this into the parenthesis. And here I'll just say select star from CTE where, and what I want to do is from this result set that I have got, okay, I only want to fetch this record. Okay, sorry, not this one. The second most recent is this one, right? Adam is singing and then I want Amy is dancing and Joe is travel, right? So how do I filter out only these records? I'll try to filter out using this row number and the count new field, okay? Maybe instead of count new, I'll just make it count, okay? And here I'll just tell row number is equal to, what I want is if there is only one record for a user, then its count will always be one because there is only one record, right? So what I'm just going to say is case when CNT is equal to one, that means there's only one record, then I want to make the row number as one. So I'll fetch the record where the row number is one. Okay. But let's say if there is more than one record, then I want to fetch the second most recent record, second most recent activity. That is, it should have the count minus one value. So what I'm going to do is I'll say count minus one. So what happens is for Adam, count is four minus one is three. So it is going to return this record. And for Amy, count is three, count minus one will return two and it will fetch this particular record. Okay. So that is what I'm trying to do here. I hope it is clear and I'm going to end the case and I'm going to, yeah, that's all. So I think that's all. Now, if I run this, now you can see that I am getting the expected output. So if you see here, Amy, uh, Adam, Amy dancing, Joe travel. If I go back to our expected output, I had this Amy dancing and Joe travel, right? So this is exactly what I wanted. Right. Yeah. And this Adam is additional record that I created. So these two columns are extra. Maybe I can just say username activity and start, start date. So, and end date. Right. So, okay. So I think if I run this, so this is exactly what I wanted. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any other solutions to the same problem, which I am again sure that you have, definitely share them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one. Bye.